Hey everybody, my name is Cinnamon Cooney. I am your archer, but today I'd like to show you how you can paint this fantastic cabin with these aurora lights in the background and snowflake splashes. It's a lot easier than you think. I'm going to explain every step of the process so you can duplicate it at home. To that end, on the mic over there is my husband, John. Hey guys. Sometimes they call him stunt hands if you're wondering <laughs> later on in the chat. And what he basically does is manage and wrangle the technology kind of track my craziness with cameras. We have many zooming, hyper-dimensional cameras that are going to get you right up. You're going to be into the bristles of the paintbrush. You're going to love it so much. This is something we've been working on for a long time, so we're so excited about these episodes that are featuring these new cameras. Um, if you check the description below, you're going to see important links about uh, other videos. Like I have a video about how to do splatter, and it covers a bunch of different ways that you can do splatter. Um, oftentimes, there'll be information in the iCard as well. That's a little floating eye with other videos you may want to watch, including that one. You can see we have a reference here. Now, this actually was a watercolor, but we're going to be painting it in acrylic. And I'm going to show you how we can do some similar effects without even using any modifiers or special canvases or doing this on paper. We're going to do this with just our normal acrylic tools or semi-normal because there, there may be some sponges in there somewhere. How's everybody doing today? Very, very good. This is great. Everybody's really excited to do this one today. I'm excited to do this one today. This is just a hap This is my picture in picture. You guys get your own picture in picture, but I need one that's uh, in a nice distance to my neck. Now, materials wise what i have here this is an artist loft board this is an 11 by 14. Um, this is a very economic option for you and it stores very easily it's not any more difficult to frame than a canvas and it's as good as a canvas so it's just something to think about we have some wishes on here like we like to do we have a healing wish for uh susan who um like my mom years ago learned bed making is super dangerous so just public service announcement don't make your bed that is where you're going to get injured. <laughs> so don't make beds, anyone. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Kids everywhere are like, I'm done. It's dangerous. Okay. We, I'm wishing that all the Sherpettes and all the people watching the show get all their Christmas wishes granted this year, whatever they may be. We have wishes for Alaska and the continuing safety for Alaska and the citizens and a quick recovery because they've been going through a lot. And that's not a fun thing to go right before the holidays. As Our family had a house burned down like Christmas Eve our house not like a house our house and it's just not fun to go through disaster like especially during this time of year so we're sending extra love you guys be safe be aware and stay safe during these aftershocks and then um this one is very near and dear to my heart we're wishing for safety warmth and shelter for all the families who are currently going through just extra hardships this year so yeah. Of course, just generally all families, but you know those families that are really, really facing those things, that you're safe, that you're warm, that your bellies are full, and that everything is okay for you. Because those are the really important things. All right, let's look at the materials. So I've got burnt sienna, cadmium yellow, dox dioxazine purple, phthalo blue, quinacridone magenta. I've got some zinc white. I'm thinking this may be in there. It's a great way to fuzz things up or fog things. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Mars black. This is a fluid paint. It's Now listen. This is whole bind titanium white. It's a really fantastic paint. It's super pigmented and it comes out the consistency. What you might be familiar of is craft paint. If you've got this really good product in your art store, I would totally recommend getting it. If you don't, you can do craft paint in a pinch. I have regular heavy body ti uh, titanium white and some ultramarine blue as well. And my specialty tools for splattering, I've got some of my little galaxy brushes. These are available all over the place it's not a toothbrush though i i did design it on the toothbrush kind of concept that's here however you would never put this on your teeth for any reason <laughs> unless you're very angry at yourself i have a nice little pout knife to make some paint if i need to and some slightly damp sponges for blending but the first thing we really got to do is start painting in this canvas so one of the things that i'm going to do because i have some watercolor words here is i'm going to lightly mist my canvas with my little mister these are little micro misters um, most art stores have a little brand of them and i'm gonna definitely definitely oh no you know what i did what'd you do i didn't use the watercolor pencil <laughs> what does that mean that means i used uh not a wax pencil thankfully but i used another kind of pencil which is why this isn't vanishing glad i checked it ah but i'm able to lighten it enough where i don't think i'm going to end up 
with any trouble here. And one thing that I can do is if I'm really concerned, I can take this stage because I know I've got to have a lot of maybe some blue in this area. And I'm going to just put some blue paint directly on my sponge. And I'm going to just do this just real quick. Oh, that makes sense. Right? Just kind of knocking them back and making it where they're not going to come through my glazed layers of paint. This happens sometimes. Sometimes you do something and you have a lot of art materials in your studio and you go, oh, my watercolor pencil, but it's not. It's a regular colored pencil. So that's a problem. <laughs> we can all have these little things happen in our studios. So I'm just using the sponge actually very similarly to how I was going to be using it for everything else. But this way I am getting it to knock back those words because I used the wrong art material. There you go. Happens to everybody. I'm going to dry this real quick so I can do the technique for real. Okay. All right. So I was just checking the microphone there. Okay. Yeah. So, oh my gosh. Wow. There's a lot of you guys today. That's exciting to see how many of you come out to paint with us. So, you know, as I was saying to Cinnamon the other day, I love, love, love that you guys come and paint with us. Um, I especially love all the new paint, new people painting with us today. Thank you for taking that brave step. We really appreciate it. I mean, that uh, excites me so much when I hear about all of you new guys painting along. So thank you for joining us. Yes, thank you. And for all the shenanigans that have already kicked off. Yes. All right. So I'm going to put some stuff to the side so I can put out the colors that I'm going to immediately oh, be using. And then we are going to get into it. Because I want to get this wonderful background done. But to do that, I have to lay out my palette which I often do beforehand, but I wanted you to see visually all the colors I'd be using. Now, if you've never, if you just got yourself real cadmium pigment, and I'll usually say CP pigment or real cadmium pigment, if it says hue, this doesn't apply to you. If your paint says hue or it's a student paint, it wouldn't really apply to you that much. However, it is a good idea to always think about whenever you introduce a new art product into your studio, if there's any chance that you might have allergies. Right? Ooh, yeah, because pigments, I mean, even there's a bunch of, this is all the ultramarine blue. There's a bunch of kerfuffle in the beauty segment um, because press pigments uh, give some people allergies, especially red press pigments, which I totally knew. It's so funny, like all the stuff they're just discovering. They're like, oh my God, it's bug butts. I'm like, yeah, artists have known that for a while. Wait till you find out where the brown comes from. But um, <laughs> paint. I'm going to put out a little magenta. There we go. Love so I was just ask, uh, answering a question here in chat. Mm. Um, they were asking where the bubble my... machine was. Huh? They were asking where the bubble machine the was. The bubble machine <laughs> so, has been on a journey. Well, and it's back. Is it back? Is it bubbling? Well, no. I don't see it anywhere. It's, you know, it's here. The, the, <laughs> I'm looking all around. You see bubble? He's right there. But the reason why he's oh. not um, set up in here is because... We have all these new wires that I had to run in. Oh, yeah. We guess it all goes. That, that I had to run them last. So. Got to run them last. Now that I have everything else more or less in place. I'm going to miss this up, you know, because I want it to miss nicely. I don't want this sponge. Look, you can use a kitchen sponge. You can use the ones, you know, the ones with the scrubbies on the back. Just don't use it for dishes again. I'm going to get a little bit of my yellow on here. I know I don't have any allergies to cadmium, like in any way. In any anyway, I might even get a little bit. Just see how little I got of it. A yep. little bit of the pink to warm up that yellow. And right here, we're going to just start. Let's circle up and down some wonderful little kind of yellow glow you might be getting, right? Sometimes you get some yellow glow in your sky, especially up north where you might be exposed to the northern lights. And just rolling that back and forth. I'm going to get some more white, some a lot more white. And I'm going to come right here. And I'm really going to lighten this up because I want this close to the mountains to be quite light. If you can see this. Quite oh, lovely, yeah. quite light. Quite yellow. Because we're just making sure. Now, the trick with the sponges, if you haven't painted with me before and you've never seen this technique, is it lets us get some very soft blends as acrylic artists, especially if the paint's wet before it dries, because we can do this buffing motion. So now, to put the paint on, I press, but to buff it, I just very lightly go over it, buffing and blending it out in such a way that it gives you some nice little results. I'm gonna just add a little bit more yellow here. Because, oh, this is so fun, right? Now, our next color that we'll be transitioning into, now our, our painting should be much brighter even 
than uh, the example watercolor because we're going to be using these beautiful pigments and they're not glazes or well they're a little glazy but they're more opaque than watercolors and so that's going to let us get some really tremendous gorgeous 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 effects and you can see as i'm going into here i'm getting some orange and i can move that down we're always surprised at the sponge the power of the sponge power of the sponge compels you <laughs> all right compels me to paint it compels you to something <laughs> but it does you know you just kind of get in here and you're just buffing and i'm taking this down sort of towards where i know the mountains will be and when you want to do a clean buff you just switch the sponge over and look you can come right here and very softly influence all the colors around you i can even come in on a corner here and let soften this i'm just using just the edge of that sponge these are tools like anything else in your art box and they can have effects and get results and you can take advantage of that i just grabbed some yellow and i'm blending that in because for this to really feel kind of magical and mystical that background needs to have some dynamic lighting going on i intend that we're going to get like our favorite background we've ever gotten with this piece so here we go i'm going to get a little more of my pink on here but i'm going to grab a little bit of my ultramarine and i don't want any yellow in it though so that was a boo-boo that i just made there because the the yellow is going to gray it and i want a purple that i'm going to work with like this here we're starting to talk about this purple go a little bit deeper just picking these paints up and i'm just buffing these out what's nice is the blue is kind of coming through underneath giving me a nice effect there and i'm going to just again softly work this over And then just very softly work this here into the pink. And you can see the pigments are starting to influence each other. Let's get some just blue here. And let's buff this out a little bit. Fun, getting it in. And you can see where it's mixing in. It gets that little bit of a purple going. If you lose anything, you can even go back and get some purple and pull that in. Uh, softly work that. There we go. See how we're doing. Let's look at this. How are we getting some? So we're getting some glowing effects. Now I'm going to rinse out my sponges because I need to be sure that their pigments are uh, out. And I may have to. <sighs> oh, hi. Sorry, my DJ had a question here. I was uh, my mic was off for a second, but she asks, would we start with? Uh, with the blue as well but was that just out of necessity that was out of necessity but it's 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 this is why uh you hear bob ross say there's no mistakes only happy accidents often what happens in paintings is something will happen to you like you discover that you didn't use your watercolor pencil and you have to address that in some way and it changes the plan that you very put you know carefully put out for your painting and then in that flexibility that adjustment that you make to that reality you actually discover a newer, better painting within the painting. It's a weird thing, but it's it's often something that happens in art, and it's something I'm particularly glad that happens in art because sometimes I'd be really needing it. Now I'm going to get a little bit of my pink here in my white because I want a, a lighter, softer color, and I'm going to come right in. I'm going to make sure that there's just this sort of little pink pop of a transition. Maybe through here. Can you see how it's going through and it gets up into the blue? It looks beautiful, right? Kind of unexpected. Softly buffing. Because that works so well. Get a little bit of my white and my pink. So, yeah, if you want to go, oh, I'm going to do the blue too because I like that exact result she's getting, I will not think that you're wrong because now I would do it the same way again. If that makes sense. <laughs> Be like, You're like, ooh, wow, going to do that again next time. <laughs> I That happens to me more than you think where I'm like, ooh, I got to do that again next time. And I'm going to take a little bit of my 
phthalo blue and my diox purple. They make the most incredible night sky color when you're trying to get the deep edges. It gives you an option besides black, which can get a little boring. And I'm going to come up here and I'm going to hit this up high region, which would be darker in my sky. You're also going to have a nice kind of little peak, maybe peak a little bit right here. I'm still. I use the sponge, you know, it's, it's interesting because you can use the sponge. You can actually catch shapes and maybe work a little magic in an area that you didn't expect to. And then I just make sure that I've got a soft blend. And I'm going to want maybe some lighter blue coming up here. So this is interesting. I can grab a little of my white and just my phthalo. And that'll be quite a pigmented coverage. And I can even come through here and make sure that I've got this sort of corridor of lighter sky. See how we're doing? Sort of like implying that arm of the Milky Way that shows up at Arcadia, I think. Mm. I need to spend more time there. Yes, you do. So I have that nice basis that I can like work with and play with. But I'm not done. No. No. How can no, you? No, I be tell done? you. I'm gonna dry. Okay. Because I don't want the next part to blend in any way. I will chit chat with my friends. Let them dry, and let's all admire our beautiful, colorful sky. Yeah, very beautiful. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Well, so I will say for those of you who are new, if you are using a hair dryer and you're drying your surface, your whether it be a canvas or a canvas board or a, pa uh, a gesso panel, whatever you're, you're, you're using, make sure that you uh, don't use heat because heat doesn't do real well with, a, with acrylic. Um, it can cause shrinkage. It can cause color shift. Not so much on pro paints, but definitely in your student paints. So be careful about using too much heat. Now, those of you that have the traceable know that I've kind of oriented the cabin a little more over here in this piece. And so we have this nice open space. So I'm going to get my little mountain range. And I'm going to use chalk to sort of help me know where I'm going to put it. Because I also have to think about what's peaking above it, right? How is, like, am I showing the parts of my sky that I want to show what as I'm coming across here? And I might lose a lot of my yellow. So I'm like, oh, I don't want to lose a lot of my yellow. So maybe I'll erase some of my little chalk and take this up a little more and maybe go down a little bit, like, I, like right here. So I can keep some of that drama a little bit. So I need to look at what's peaking above and oops, got pink on that side. But luckily, I can just get this one and get rid of it. Now what kind of chalk are you using? Just chalkboard chalk guys. Okay. Just chalkboard chalk. And this is just the brush with some water in it. You always know when I'm gonna interrupt you because I'm gonna say now. Now. <laughs> it's so important. Now I've got there to There we ask go. You. I like that. I just wanted a little more of my yellow showing and peeking up. Even though I'm going to be getting in it with my um, fan brush, it's still nice to have. Let's get a little bit of our phthalo and our dots purple. And we're going to very softly kind of make this little distant mountain edge that's here. And I'm letting this edge, if you notice, be soft like in the watercolor. Whenever you do something from another medium, and I like to do this every once in a while, paint an acrylic that was designed in another medium. I just did that with a girl walking in the rain and I very much enjoy that. And I just used the sponge. Look at this, just as this little brush. As the brush it is. Get some just pure purple. You know, and just be putting this here. Now for comfort, I'm gonna flip my little canvas over. Go ahead and darken this space up because I can do a lot of this with um, my brushes for sure, but this way, it's a nice little space, and I can say, "Oh, how dark is that? Is that dark enough?" And if I want any other values, I can grab some more blue. See how we're just putting that faraway mountain there? It's soft, right? Smudgy smudge. See, back and forth. Look at this little sponge. See, the, see my messed up hand in this little sponge? And you're just going, oh my gosh, she finally got herself a manicure and she just messed it all up. 
That's so sad. <laughs> True. True that. Okay. You guys seen the northern lights kind of raising up there? We got some good Oh yeah. stuff. Now I'm going to clean up my hand real quick and we'll take a couple questions. I'm going to sip some coffee and oh. I will show you guys how I'm going to use a fan brush. What's a fan brush? I will. Show. It is one of these brushes. Now, is if you don't have one of these, you could take a round and pinch it. Ooh. <laughs> and just paint in the bristles. So that's like, if I like was somewhere where I was like, man, I need a fan brush, I would grab a nice big round and pinch it. That's what I would do if I were stuck somewhere. Taffy says your nails look great. Oh, thank you, Taffy. DJ says thank you for the answer. I am taking this mess off of myself with um, rubbing alcohol because it's, not going to damage my little show manicure. Them, show them what you can do. I can't, they can't see. Okay. Oh, well, actually, you know what? I can just take control and do it. I can just uh, it it's it not no going to damage my manicure, but it'll get the paint out of my nails and my skin. You know. So is this, this is part of the lesson, how to get the blue out of your nails. I guess it's an unexpected lesson that you guys get at these wonderful Ste live moments. Stephanie was asking, are there, are there plans for a space cat? Yes. Sorry, Stephanie. I know it's been... It's been a journey. Yes, there are plans for a space there, cat. I think there's been there's been requests for a space cat. Yeah, very Lots much of. so. And love space cats. Painting I really actually personally want to do. Put out a little of my burnt sienna. Zoe would has requested more puns <laughs> and cowbell. I'm gonna I'm, I added cowbell, but sure, uh, more cowbell for sure. All right. But, well, now this is dangerous because I put my Mars black next to my Doc's purple, and really, honestly, if you don't have a very tuned eye, you may want to move them far <laughs> away from each other because they look pretty much the same. They do. They're just kind of a thing like that. Now, and also, I'm going to put out, and I'm going to see how I like it. If I love it, you can do it. If I don't love it, you can be like, noping out. I'm pretty sure I'm going to love it. I'm going to initially use for some lighter effects, right? Like I'm going to. Maybe push this little mountain back in a second and do some stuff. But I want to want to get some Aurora going here. We get a little bit of the yellow in there. Ooh. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I know. It's just, it's going to be big drama. Love it. Hopefully you guys love it. A little pink. Fun to see where you can take these northern skyscapes. Because you think about this person living at this cabin and, and all the magic that they have around them. You can use just titanium white if you have it. I just like the slightly transparent effect of this. I'm here and I arc on the edge and then I widen it out. So let me show you a little something on how I'm making this work. Because sometimes people have a little trouble with, uh, with the uh, brush. And I'll do it with just the pink paint. When I start on the rail edge, think of this as like a calligraphy nib. I can make it quite thin, but then as I sweep out curves, you can see it widens out. You guys need to see that again? Yeah, hold on a second. Okay. I'm still on. Fan brushes do a lot. <laughs> right? So if I, if I want to start the Aurora or anything with this nice line, but then as I curve, you can see that it curves it out. And you can always even come back on the point and define it, can't you? Making a nice little rail. See how we're doing? I want to come back with some white and blend it. I could do that. Some, some blue. So hopefully you guys are kind of understanding how that stroke goes. It's really about being on the rail and then as you're turning, when it goes up, it's thin. When it turns, it's out. Just like a calligraphy pen. Let's see how that's going. Oh, that's pretty dramatic. I think. Now I'm going to get a little more into my um, titanium, I think. 
Okay. Karen. Karen says. Just, just wait. Karen says, please let everyone know that not all fan brushes work this way. Some are way too soft. Okay. Well, yes. That is, this is a very, with, with very much appreciation, she is giving us a opportunity to say, these fan brushes were designed for acrylic paint. They really were. Um, Cinnamon worked with our manufacturer and they really came up with a design that uh, is something that's cool and it does this effect. So. I'm going to plug my wife and our, our partner for doing an awesome job. Aw, you're sweet. Well, I mean, you made a really cool new tool. I'm getting a little quinacridone and a little pink. And I'm going to get a little of my titanium white. And I'm going to come here and I'm going to just see if I can't zhuzh up but yeah, this if, part. There is, a, there is a chance that if you're not using a very stiff bristled fan... You may get be getting a more squishy effect. It does help to have a stiff one. It does help. I agree. But I don't ever like to make people feel like they couldn't get there, which is why like I like to show people like, oh well, how would you do this if you didn't have the brush? You know, how how would that be for you? I mean, because yeah. you can flail out a lot of brushes. You can it's not easy. I'm gonna get this brush wet. I'm going to fan it with my fingers, right? Like, look, like my fingers are like right in it. I am not, it's oh, not an on. easy journey for me. I can get it to fan though. <laughs> and I think the thing that you have to realize is that most artists persevere a lot. They persevere a lot. They are constantly, I'm going to blend that out a little bit. You know, and you could just do this with a round brush. I'm just showing you guys. Here, let's do a little round brush. Let's say I just have a round brush and I don't have a fan. I don't have anything, right? But you could just be like this. But that really nice effect that you did demonstrate there is fan based. And, and having a stiff fan brush makes it possible. A much soft easier. Hand brush. Yeah, soft so brush. much easier. You're going to struggle with a soft hand brush. So. Just knowing that, that about the tools is important to know. Um, It'll help. Yes. I'm going to show you how you can use zinc. So I'm going to get some zinc. This is the zinc. You don't have to do this. But if you wanted to put your mountains back in, a, in almost like a, like a fog, and this works for anything that you're doing. If you've ever had the experience where you painted something that was just too bright and it looked too up close, and it wasn't atmospherically back. You need to, you know, put distant clouds, fog, mist. Another way to get there is to push things back with a fan. I mean, not with the zinc. You see how that got pushed back a little bit? Softened. Does it look yeah. softened to everybody? It does look softened. So that could be a hard thing to do is get those soft. Well, it's too softened. <laughs> too it's softened. It's no doubt. It got snowed. That's right. It got a little more snowed. But this, this gives us a little bit of atmosphere going back there. So the, the lines are soft. The mountains are softly pushed back. We're getting, getting some headway. Now, interestingly enough, our cabin in the example doesn't have snow. All the splatters are kind of behind and a little bit in front. And that's because of when it was placed in. We're going to do ours where it does have snow and everything in front of it because I want it to look like you're looking at this through snow. You know, that's the goal. Let me get some zinc here, though. And make sure that this looks a little bit lightened up. I can right here. Sometimes I like to push a little bit. There we go. Push it back. See, I lightened it up a little bit. So this is what you can do. You can adjust. All right, so we've goofed, we've adjusted, we've had a little bit of fun. I'm going to try again because that's right. going to let me draw in my cabin. And I love this cabin shape because it's like triangles and I'm like, there's no perspective and yay! <laughs> so, okay. All right, everybody. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I am still getting the hang of some of these new cameras. So as I'm over here switching, we're kind of looking around and learning how all the buttons get pressed and... I really appreciate you guys, your understanding, and patience while, you know, I, I kind of miss things that here and there, and I'm still getting to know all the equipment, and I promise 
we will continue to make it better and better. So now in my little, you know, arrangement, I'm going to put my cabin a little more over here, right? So that there's, there's a bit of asymmetry to the composition, which is going to make it more enjoyable. I'm going to make a low hanging frame, right? That's that low sloped roof that's, uh, catches too much snow. Yeah. That's supposed the... to have a steeper roof if it's snowy, but they didn't. <laughs> Those steep roof. I'm going to put some little straight lines down. So see, it's a little triangle up and a little triangle over long. Let's come down here. You know, and then it's got some little woodshed stuff afoot. That we're going to go like that. And we have two little windows right here. So what we've learned, because there's no door, is the door is on another side of the cabin. Space those out a little more from each other. Don't you love how a wet brush erases chalk? <laughs> Space them out a little bit. But so we don't have to put a pathway up. And that's an option that you can have as an artist where you put the pathway up. Where you put the door in a composition tells a lot about the story, too. What are we looking at? How are we in relationship? to the art and even though we're beginners and we're learning this stuff it doesn't mean we can't enjoy these little mental moments so then the snow is going to come here let's go over here and come like that so we've got a little snow we've got this sweet little cabin we can handle that we've got our brown out and we've got our other stuff out let's just get a little bright brush i have a number six ruby satin bright it's just a little square and i'm going to get my brush sort of loaded with brown and I'll go ahead and get a little black into it. The reason this is like this is because the windows will have had a glow and so they're gonna glow up a little bit around the cabin. I'll go over the top on the edge of my brush and I just pull down on the straight and can come back on the edge and that's gonna help me make my windows. So the shape of the brush can be your friend when you're making windows. Brush that down a little bit. We're just covering all the blue with our cabin. Now I'm going to get into my black much more intensely. And I'm going to blend these together. See how I'm blending where they're soft? I'm just letting that be a little bit of a glow. Take my little chalk line out. Not even by the snow. We've got just a little bit of a glow. We're really going to play with the light on the snow, too. Yeah. We're going to take that a little bit further. If we can. There we go. A little. It'll be fun when we put the little snow on there. No. Who likes snow? Who's in snow right now? Would be my question. I don't know. I'll have to go check. You know, it's really hard now that I've got to. Oh. The other Robocam, I've got... It's uh, like hard to do that. Yeah, because it's really easy for me to uh, miss a control sequence and make one go jump around. Jump, jump, jump around. <laughs> we got true. a new studio. Whoa, whoa. So now I've got all my black in, and I'm going to take a little bit of my black, and I'm going to extend it down the roof, right? So that we have some place for the snow bank to bank on as it would be want to do and come back into my brown and continue to make sure that that blend is what I really really want with it rinse this out thoroughly and we're going to get a little bit of our white and a bit of our cad I'm going to come in here, and on the left-hand side, I'm going to put this yellow and white mix. That's my glow on this side. Now I'm going to get a little of my yellow and quinacridone, which make actually quite a warm red. I almost added CAD to the mix, but didn't because I realized that the quin and the CAD, CAD red. Queen and the cad red were going to really get us there. 
And by limiting the palette, it was going to keep it a little more romantic. Let's see how that's doing. Are those windows almost glowing? Oh, yeah. Almost. We're going to take a little bit of this bright yellow. And in the middle of that window, look, we're going to put a little window reflection, like we can. Cool. Now the windows are glowing. Oh, yeah, they are. Okay, so to do the snow, interestingly enough, we're going to take a little of our blue and a little bit of our wonderful ultramarine, and we're going to grab our white. And at first, we'll make this sort of dark blue. Lori says she's in a lot of snow. Are you in a lot of snow? Let's paint the snow. Let's paint it and stay toasty warm while we paint it. Laura will have extra energy she can put into her snow painting because she's living it right now. Hmm. I'm just adding my little snow bank. Because, you know, you got a little snow bank. And there'd be a little snow bank right here. And I can even make that a little bit uneven. And you can do that a little bit on the roof, too. It doesn't have to be like a perfect little blanket. Fun stuff. Up front, I can grab a bigger brush. Um, just any big bright you have that isn't going to make you really work for it. I'm going to start by doing a similar thing. I'm going to grab a little bit of my ultramarine and my thalo. And if you don't have both, it's not going to ruin your painting. The only thing that's going to ruin your painting is you not painting it. A little darker than that, I think, to start with. We have to get the deep value of our snow. There we go. And we're going to not use a lot of water in this mix. And I'm even going to dry brush. See how I'm dry brushing? And that's letting what's underneath show through. You can do a lot by having an inner painting. One of the things that really throws new painters is they will um, want to uh, 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 paint not enough layers and they freak out before they have enough layers. And they don't realize things like having the whole painting colored underneath before you start these, these effects make it look finished. And you will mistakenly get the idea that you're not amazing and fantastic and incredible at painting, which you are. Let's pull this up here. All right. I'm going to just go ahead and pull some of this up right there. This is a lighter color. You see I've created a lighter value, but I'm still dry brushing it in. I'm still trying to lay it down like a blanket. This might be a darker color. Next one. Darker. So I've added more of that, and I'm coming underneath here. And again, still laying it down like a blanket. So it's like, goodness gracious, just out of the blue, we already got some snow shape happening here. Where'd that come from? We haven't even added snow yet, which we're going to do right now. Without rinsing the brush, I'm going to get a lot more white onto my brush. And I'm going to come here and see how lightly I'm pressing. I'm going to go ahead and add some bright white to this little cap coming forward just a bit. A little more of this. Maybe I'll. Uh, see, I'm going back and forth. I'm being very light, and I'm letting a lot of the blue shine through, and then I'm going to come right here. So how's our snow? Do we have some snow? Oh, look, we've got some snow. And that's what it is. It's like, can you leave those shadow values so that the snow, people want to paint white, 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 where they feel like they've got snow, but you actually don't want white, 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 where you've got snow. Yeah. Monica was asking, and, and I've not had a chance to, I saw that question come up earlier. But mm. the, what's the difference between a size one and a size th uh, three over zero? Um, well, in my line, I think I have, this is a one and somewhere should be a three over zero in this set, but I don't see three, one. Three over zero is smaller than a one, right? So much smaller. Is um, it's a micro detail. They're then a micro brush, often used in very, very detail. I only have ones out right now. I must be washing we're, all my we're, tinies. Well, we got studio rebuild going right now. Yeah, we have studio build, right, but it's just smaller. But the thing you have to understand is in brushes, there's not a universal sizing. So that's why sometimes I like that you can see the brush in relationship to my hand to get a sense of it, or I might say it's one inch wide. But that used to really confuse everybody because nobody ever lists their brushes as the measurements they are US or and it's not actually about millimeters it's really strange 
within each brush line, they have their own little process, and they sort of try to size off of each other, but then again, not really. And also, if a brush is short-handled, its number will be much higher than if it's long-handled, and there's just like, you know, like, it's I, have, I have this number 26 short-handled, and here's a number 10. <laughs> and you can just see they're just a really different brush, right? Here's a number 10. It's same, same, same brush type. Like, so this is a bright. Oh. And this is a bright. These are both brights. Can you guys see something I messed up that camera, so hold on a second. So the 26, right, is there longer, goes. has a longer length out, right? Longer length out from the ferrule to the end of the bristles. Same brush maker, same brush line. Short handled, long hand. Hard to, other than guide you guys through that experience, really be able to explain what it is. I'm going to get a little bit of the white on here, just dry. And I'm going to come along the top of my cabin. And I put some snow. Don't you think we need some snow on the top? It's fluttered down by brushing it. I'm just trying to use like a rough stroke so that it doesn't look like an even bit. There we go. A little, little blanket of snow on that. You can so even how many come here and add this a is? little more white. Huh? How many hoots do you think this is? Uh, well, I, I was going to say one, but I'll say it's one if you're comfortable with the sponging. Two, if the sponging is really unfamiliar to you. Like, one, if you've done, like, two or three of these sponging videos with me, you've done two or three sponging videos, you are, you're like, yeah, totally one hoot. If you've never sponged before, there's a real thing about learning how not to press too hard when you're trying to buff and to press hard enough if you've, if you've never done it before. So there's just that, it, it's like le learning to ride a bike. You know, none of us are doing BMX tricks here, but it can be initially a little challenging to get up, right? But of course, you're going to do it. This is like that. You, you may just be like, what? What's happening with the sponge? Why is it one hoot? It's, it's one hoot because it's a skill. If you give it a little bit of effort and practice and perseverance, you're going to pick it up. If it takes you a minute to take it off the canvas and practice it on some practice sheets of paper, so you're like, oh, I get it. This is how it's blending. Go for that. Now, but don't give up on yourself because that is the only way you're going to fail at art. The only way you fail at art is if you give up on yourself. If you're just like, I'm doing this. Nothing. But nobody is going to stop me, not even this crazy blue-haired lady. That's fine. So I, I actually spaced out when you were doing this, too. So the uh, question was, what, what uh, white there were you using to make that? Titanium well, white. Okay, titanium white. So zinc, super transparent. Wonderful for fogs and clouds and mists. Titanium white, not transparent. Gotcha. I'm so. not allergic to either of these paints, so it's really safe for me to do this. Now, the next thing that I can do, and I'm going to come here and I'm going to just do some little definition lines. I'm going to come up on the top of this hill maybe and kind of take this little line and maybe talk about some of this space almost graphically. Anytime I use a line on something, it is a little bit graphic and not the kind of graphic that gets rated higher, but the kind of graphic that is like a novel, like a comic. And again, if as artists we stick our nose up at any techniques, then we just miss out on all the fun. Now, once all that's there, guess what I get to do? What's that? Fun, 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 fun stuff. You can check the glow on your window, and I feel like the glow on my window could be brighter. So I'm going to get just some cad uh, yellow in my red, because remember, yellow and red make orange. I'm going to make sure that this is just super bright right here. You see that? Right in that upper corner. So that there's contrast there. You know, that way if I go into the yellow and there we go. Sometimes it takes a couple layers. Catch the full thing. Now with this yellow, I'm gonna just load up yellow. You can see it's kind of dirty. It's sort of loosely mixed. I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna go underneath the window. No, and I'm, I'm just gonna... dusting back and forth very gently. Can you see I'm just rocking the brush on the edge of its bristles like back and forth? I do, yeah. And we're just we're just dusting that. And we're going to come here and maybe 
Okay. Oh, dude, you too. Right. I've got a couple of. Uh, I want to. I want to give big hugs out here, because we have some displaced uh, Alaskans for various reasons, and they've all said thank you for giving them the reminder of the beautiful lights from up north. So. Thank you, Sherpa. You've you've brought some unexpected light into some unexpected Sherpa. So sorry what's happening up there, guys. That is just, as a city that goes through hurricanes pretty regularly, I get it. And I grew up in California and I get earthquakes and just really sorry. I know it's just, it's just, even if everything is okay, it's still a lot. So, oh, tectonic plates. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Love you guys. Be safe. Rage against the weather. We all do it together. <laughs> Rage against the weather. So I have my splattering brush. Now, in the description and also in the iCard is a video about splatter. And it shows you the whack method and some different tools that I have. And it also shows you my set. But it doesn't mean that you have to use it. And you may have your own splatter method. This is my splatter rule. Come here. I want you to promise me that before you splatter your canvas, you'll take another piece of paper, preferably like construction paper or something you can see the splatter on, test it. And also, don't do this technique in your kitchen with your fine marble and your beautiful stainless steel. If you do, be sure you have some rubbing alcohol so you can clean it up, but your husband's still going to find it on the tech and he's going to have a whole bunch of feelings because mine always does. So, <laughs> <laughs> or your partner. Just wherever you're at. The other person who is not painting with you who doesn't understand why there's spackles of many colored paint all around. And you're like, but they're rainbow freckles. <laughs> so those are the things I want you to promise. That being said, I'm going to show you how I do it with this tool. And you check for the tools that you have in the description. Okay. And if you use a really brutal, brutal toothbrush, it might work. But honestly, this it just looks like a toothbrush. What I have here, I've plugged up my thing. I forget the. I'm just pouring some of this out. So you can see what I mean by this is the consist. This is not craft paint. It's fine art paint. It's the consistency of craft paint. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to get it all in here. Boom, bitty, boom. And I like to make sure it's worked through whatever I'm splattering with. And it really doesn't matter if I'm using a brush and I'm flicking it or if I'm whacking a brush or using a grate or any of the methods that you can splatter. It's important to make sure it's worked through. Look, I'm going to test here. Oh, that looks pretty good. I want to make sure okay, I can. So I see test this. here, so I can test right here on the side and go. Okay, I don't have any crazy splatters. Yeah. That's what you're trying to avoid is your crazy splatters because they can happen. Right, and you want to put enough snow on there. That you feel like it's a snowy day. These people are warm and safe and okay inside their beautiful cabin. And they're looking at the other side at this amazing night sky. Check this out. Dude, we did it. Let's sign it. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow. Man, that was so fast. It's a little fun journey in a painting, right? I'm going to sign really this is. with a number one. <laughs> Let's go here. I like to sign my paintings being aware that my signature is part of the composition. So, you know, I wouldn't necessarily use a color that I didn't have in this painting. I wouldn't drop right on it. I'm going to use white in this instance. And this is only because, well, I do want my signature to be visible so that people know who made the painting. I don't want it to disrupt the composition that I just worked so hard to work out. If you guys like this fan Aurora Borealis technique, I will spend some time in the studio. Um, and work one out that is like the waterfall. It's like 15 minutes and really quick and we get a whole like a aurora borealis with some like pine trees. I'll work a whole like thing out. Cause seeing that I'm thinking, if I spent just like three or four hours, I could come up with something really cool. If you want. Yes. Only if you want. And look, we did this under an hour, 50 minutes. Listen, be good to yourselves, especially this time of year. Cut yourself a break. Be understanding there's a lot of stuff happening with family, with life, with shopping, just with pressure, with work. So just be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at the easel really soon. Bye-bye.